with our members so that people who can't make the meetings can still hear these programs. Uh, so we are happy this morning to have Jim Posey. He's the Municipal Services Manager from Republic Services here to speak with us about recycling. Thank you very much. I appreciate everybody being here tonight or today. Uh, hopefully, I got the little clicky thing working now. We had some we had some issues with the up and down button here earlier. So, um, just to kind of give you a little background, um, I'm originally from Cherry, Illinois. Born and raised in the <coughs> Illinois Valley. Uh, lived here, like I said, my entire life. I graduated from Northern Illinois uh, University back in 1991, and currently reside with my family uh, in Peru for roughly 28 years. Been in this industry for uh, about 20, 25 years, 15 years with Republic Services. 11 years, I've been uh, the commercial and industrial rep where I would stop in and talk to businesses and, and things like that. Uh, 2015, I became the Municipal Services Manager, which I love, this, this role is, I love it a, a lot. Um, and I currently manage 51 communities spread throughout 13 uh, Illinois counties. So my territory, uh, I have a little bit of stuff that is in the Joliet, Crest, Crest Hill area. I go all the way to uh, Mineral, Illinois, down to Pontiac, Shinola, and up into the Dixon, Sterling, uh, DeKalb market. So it's a it's a pretty big it's a pretty big territory. The two most popular methods of recycling uh, are curbside recycling with the bins and the curbside recycling with the carts. I think the city of Princeton uh, has the the bins right now that the drivers come by and, and, and pick up. So, let me just push the wrong button again. Basically, this is what happens. You know, once you fill it, the truck comes by and, can you see it better now? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, once you fill your material, once you fill your, your cart or your, your recycle bin, the truck comes by, picks it up, takes it away. Question of the day, where does my recyclables go once the driver picks them up and it's now inside the truck? Basically, once the truck is full, we take it to a transfer station. The city, we, have a, we own and operate this transfer station here in, in, outside of Princeton. The material is emptied outside, of, outside the truck, dumped basically on the, on the tipping floor is what, we, is what we call it. From there, it's loaded onto a semi-trailer and we take, it, we take the material here to uh, resource management in Chicago Ridge, Illinois. That's where, that's where the city of Princeton, that's where your recycled material, um, LaSalle, Peru, Spring Valley, all the stuff, once it's loaded onto the big, big semi-trailers, that's where we take it. That's what happens to the trailers once it gets to the recycling facility. They, they, um, they get placed on a tipper, and they're emptied inside the building. This is what it looks like once it's tipped. Okay, it comes onto a bigger floor, which is a, a large. Uh, it's not a conveyor belt, but it's fed by either um, the Bobcats or other larger equipment to push it onto these conveyor belts. Then from there, it's basically through a series of either water, air, magnet, the material is separated into, you know, from plastic and metal and um, things like that onto its individual, onto its own conveyor belt, basically, and it's headed out for sorting. The sorting is where you see all the people in line that are picking through the material, you know, saying this is trash, this is this is soil, this is not recyclable. From there, you've got. It goes, it basically makes it into the bales. Uh, your paper, your plastics, cardboard, and metal, they're all, all separated, okay? The garbage that's in, mixed in with it goes into a dumpster and we comes back to our landfills, okay? Recyclables are shipped basically two ways, domestically, through rail, and obviously shipped overseas. For decades, China, has been the largest importer of the world's recycled commodity. They have taken over 50%, or close to 50% of the world's recycling. Over 40% of what we produce as a nation went to China. 
just to kind of give you an example of how, how, that, how much that is, the United States used to ship over 4,000 recyclable containers a day to China. 4,000 a day, okay? Since the Chinese ban, uh, they're no longer taking the material. Big question is where will that trash go, okay? An estimated 111 million metric tons of plastic will display, be displaced by, Chinese, by the Chinese actions by 2030. The method, the, 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 basically the statement, we have to clean up our recycling efforts, okay? This has basically forced us to take a hard look at what we've been doing as a society because right now, the demand is no longer there. China was the number one importer of recycled material in the world, period. There was not even a second close, <clears throat> okay? Now, this is part of the presentation that I've been telling uh, each community that I visit on recycling. The current model of recycling is broken. When we, if you remember back in the day when you had all your bins outside and you had to separate everything. You had your plastics, your cardboard, your paper, your metal, things like that. Then when we all introduced the single stream recycling where you can put everything in, in together, it all, it all made sense, okay? It made sense, why not? The problem with that is your contamination levels go up, okay? Because there's two kinds of people that I, that I see. When they see these big blue carts <coughs> and that, and they say recycling on them, one kind of person says, thank goodness, I've got more room for recyclables. I can put this in there, I can put that in there, I can put this in there, that's great. The second type of person is going, I could put more garbage in there. And that's what they do, they bury it at the bottom and then they put it up, they put the recyclables on top. So with the, with the, the way that the, the recyclables are collected these days, with the automated cloth that comes out of the truck, the driver nine times out of 10 doesn't see the material. By the time it gets into the bucket, it's too late. If he does see like a tire or a computer or something like that, he can get out and, and, get, the, and get, get the item out. However, the majority of it, it's, it's unfortunately. Would you like for us to hold our question until later or after, right now? Um, do you have a question now? What, now well, just remember, the, I don't know everything. Well, the, the, <laughs> the Chinese ban, is that a result of politics or something to do with the economy? No, good question. Uh, yeah, basically, it's not, okay? This is part of, this is the, the, the second part of the Chinese um, Blue Sky Initiative. This is called the China Sword, okay? If you've ever seen pictures of China, you've been, if you've ever been there, talk to people that there, you literally cannot see the sky, okay? You've seen pictures of the Chinese with the masks and everything. Mm -hmm. What basically has happened is they've basically said we're done being the world's dumping ground, okay? so. They basically, the ban took effect January 1st, okay? We heard rumblings um, late 2017 that they were going to reduce the contamination levels from at or about 3% down to half a percent. So those big shipping containers that you see, because of this, because of in 2017, late 2017, they went from an, from, basically a, 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 an unobtainable amount, you, less than 5% of contamination in those containers. They're, they don't get out of the country, they certainly don't get into the country, okay? So, no, it's not, it's not about politics, it's about the Chinese cleaning up their own environment, okay? You know, they've got millennials over there too, just like, <laughs> <laughs> okay? So, but that's good, you know? Um, what the Chinese did with it is they basically use the material to fuel their factories, so they would burn it. Now they don't have an EPA like we do over here, okay? So it created a, a lot of pollution. So 
If you, if you remember when they had the, the Olympics, if you ever read stories on, on, on what they did prior to the Olympics, mm -hmm. they shut their factories down for weeks to clean up the air. So it would basically portray a good, a good image to the, to the world and the athletes could actually breathe. Okay? So it's not a lot about politics. It's got nothing to do with the, with the trade wars going on. It's got a lot to do, it's got everything to do with them cleaning up their own environment, period. So that's basically what, what recycling in, in, in China looks like, believe it or not. You know, uh, for example, cardboard. Over there, it's worth about four to five hundred dollars a ton for a bale, okay, per ton. Hmm. Over here, now, it's worth almost nothing. Simply because the, 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 the demand for the material is not there. Okay, we, we're still picking it up every day. You're still producing and I'm still producing it every day at the curb. We're still picking it up. However, because of the ban, <clears throat> it really has nowhere to go. You know, there's not a lot of, if any, mills <clears throat> left in the United States. Because when China, basically said, we'll take everything, it was, you know, it was cheaper to send it to, on a slow boat to China than it was to do it here in the States. So a lot of those mills closed up. For seven years, I was a, I was a driver. I hauled paper out of paper plants where cardboard boxes were made, picked up recycled cardboard and bring it back to make. And that was a lot of cardboard. Mm -hmm. So it has some value somewhere. It does, yeah, it, it does. It does have a value. Um, it's just, you know, you know, back in the day, it used to be worth, uh, you know, $150, $200 a ton, you know, for, for clean cardboard. You know, now, it, it's, it, it's worth half that, we're lucky. But I would think that any cardboard that uh, becomes scrap, all of it could potentially be used to make more cardboard boxes. It, it could, but there's the big, big misconception, um, misconception there. Recycling is not free. Recycling's never been free. And a lot of people think, that, oh, okay, I can, I put this in there and it can be used to make, you know, cardboard boxes again. Well, why should I, why is there a cost associated with it? Well, that's the thing. You, you, it, it's, it must it's be cheaper free. than chopping down trees. No. no. At today's, at today, in today's current market, it's cheaper to use natural resources than it is to use the, hmm. yeah, the raw materials. So yeah, and that's bad. That's because that's not. That means we're going to de deplete our natural resources that much quicker. Okay. Basically, you know, China is expanding on their waste imports. By the, I get to use this. Yes. Um, China has basically set, said that by the year 2020, they're going to be completely out of the market. They originally said that by the year 2021, they're going to be self-sufficient which means they don't need anything from anybody, they've moved that up by a year. By the year 2020, they're gonna be completely out of the market. Okay? So right now, um, there is still a little bit, there's still a little bit going to China, but not, not much. Less than 5% less than of what we produce as a company, of what we could take in this company, is going to China. Less than 5%. This gives you basically an idea of, of what happened. Prior to 2017, you can see the United States, Japan, Germany, UK, France, Italy, Canada. The blue line represents how much was going to, to China. Okay? When the ban took effect, look how much is going to China now. You know, we do have secondary markets, however, they're not made, they're not able to handle the, the, that much material. And these, com these countries here are already putting, you know, um, putting in place more stringent guidelines. They're not accepting materials because they don't want their countries to be, to be like China. Simple, simply put, you know, you can't take, you can't take the number one supplier, or number one um, buyer, number one buyer out of the market and 
expect everything to go hunky dory 24 hours later. You know, this is huge. When the Chinese announced that they were not going to take any any more material, this affected the whole world, not just the United States, but the entire world. It, it basically put everybody behind the eight ball. So, as you can see, 2017, 64% of the recyclables offered a reasonable return. Now, roughly half of that, which means the material's not worth anything anymore, okay? Because there is no buyer. And the other countries aren't willing to pay what China was, you know, was willing to pay for. So, your costs, costs go up. And that, as a, as a company, is really put us behind the eight ball. Because now we're forced to go into communities and say, you know, the current recycling model is broken. Um, we need more money because of now, because there is no return for the material that we're picking up. You know, you used to, the, the recyclables, and this is getting back to recycling isn't free, it never has been, but that perception has always been there, okay? When we collect it, we take it to the, to the recycler and you get paid money back for it, whether it's, the, you know, um, on how clean it is. You know, you're graded A, B, C, or D. A is the clean, D, D is the is the dirty, okay? That, what we got back from those, the sale of those commodities, <clears throat> helped offset some of the costs to provide that service to, to the, you know, to the residents. Now that's gone. Now there is nothing but a charge. We're paying, in some cases, we're paying more to get rid of recycling than we are to bury trash. Some companies, or some communities on the east and west coast have already given haulers permission to throw their stuff in the, in the landfill because it's cheaper. You're not going to pay 90 something dollars a ton to get rid of recycling when you can bury trash for 60 something. Okay? Smaller mom and pop companies. They're, you know, we, they, they come across our scales every day. Um, and this is throughout the, throughout the, the nation. You know, they're, they're burying everything. It's not, it's not illegal. Once the, once the material hits the trucks, it becomes the property of the, of the garbage hauler. So it's not illegal. Is it unethical? You know, that's, that's up for you to decide. But if you're a mom and pop, if you're a small hauler, even if you're a large hauler, you have to make money to stay in business in order to provide that service. If the material is no longer worth anything, you're, you're, put, in a hard, you're put in a hard position. <clears throat> this is basically the recommended business model. You know, you collect it at the, you put it out, we collect it, goes into processing, the residual is the trash, goes to the landfill, and then you're left with the with the, the sale of the material. Okay. This is broken because now this stuff isn't worth anything anymore. Very little. So it doesn't offset the cost to collect it at the curb anymore. Because <coughs> there's a processing fee. The processing fee has always been there. It's never gone away. It's been there from day one. However, the material has always been worth something to offset that processing fee. So we've really never had to address it because we were getting money back for the material. Now, that's all there is. This, there's very little. It does not, what we get back from the, the sale of the material does not cover the cost to, to pick it up at the curb and it doesn't cost, doesn't cover the processing fee. Like I said, in some cases, we're paying more to get rid of recycling than we are to get rid of trash. <clears throat> How do we fix it? Public education, number one, and that's the most <clears throat> important, most important item. Public education. We need to get the word out. Okay. What we've done through, I don't know what I just did there. Okay. Um, what we've done through RecyclingSimplified.com, this is our website. We've <coughs> made all of this stuff available. We put IML stickers on our garbage, on our recycling carts. 
Okay, so every time you go put something in it, it's got a list similar to what I gave you guys of what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. Okay, the good thing about this, it's all free. We've made it free, so you can go on the website, download anything you want, and have it printed off or whatever, or print it on a, you know, on your own printer. I've had uh, teachers, you know, ask for this material, and I point them to the RecyclingSimplified.com. There's some great videos. They haven't, we even had a great video on, in um, uh, around the holidays of what you can recycle as far as wrapping paper and, and things like that. So it's a very, very good website to go on. I encourage everybody to, to go on. Like I said, you can print out all of this stuff for free. We've been getting the word out. Um, our CEO, Don Schlager, has been on several interviews um, on, the, on the internet, on TV. We've basically been getting the word out and that's what we need everybody else to do as well. Because word of mouth goes a heck of a lot farther than giving everybody a little, a little piece of paper, okay? We need to, public needs to understand the issue, um, public awareness on what and how to recycle. You know, long-term viability. We need, to, we need to come up with a better solution of what we've been doing. We need to change our habits. <coughs> because if we don't, and I, some of you probably know this and heard this already, if we don't clean up our act, they're saying that by the year 2050, I believe it is, they're gonna be more plastic in the ocean than there is fish. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's a, pretty, that's a pretty bold statement. So we need to clean up our act, period. We need to reassess the uh, what's accepted, what's not accepted. You know, glass, for an example. Glass, for example. It's worth virtually, virtually nothing. You know, in some communities, glass has been completely removed from the recycling stream because it's heavy. It's not cost effective to 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 turn back into glass, and glass is porous. Okay, a lot of people don't know this. I found out out, out this the hard way because when I had a fish tank, you know, the outside of the tank would get dirty and you put some Windex on it and you know, clean it up and looks nice and shiny. Well, it, the fish were dying. Why, why is the fish dying? Glass is porous. So it holds on to the sugars and the alcohols that are inside the glass, making them almost impossible to turn back into new glass. And to extract those, those, those that, li that liquid or whatever the residuals out, very cost effective, very costly. Okay, so it's really not all that. When some of us were young, the bottles were reused. Yeah. Yeah. Now nobody wants them because they can't get rid of them. But that is an option. Yeah. I, I, I understand it. Hauling glass back to be reused burns fuel. Well, but it's but when it gets there, like I said, it's not. It's it's very costly to. to to melt down and turn back into, into No, I'm glass. talking about washing the bottle and refilling it with beer or pop or whatever. Well, yo, yeah, yeah, good point, because <clears throat> majority of the people, how many of you, after you're done with a bottle of beer or a bottle <coughs> of wine or whatever, rinse it out? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so I, like I said, I've been in this industry for 25 years. And there's because of this because of the Chinese ban, I'm now learning stuff again, which is fantastic because some of the stuff I had didn't have any clue about, and I'm in the industry. So how can we expect the general public to know about it? You're not in the industry. You're not touching the material every day. You're not seeing this stuff. So getting the word out, like I said, is is very important. This one I love. This one, okay. <clears throat> You're tired. You can see that they've gone from, you know, you still have the you still have the plastic bottle, but they've gone to these little Tide Pods that the kids love to eat all the time. <laughs> and the millennials, we like the kids. Just kidding. Um, but so this thing isn't recyclable. It may have the chasing the, the chasing arrows on it, but it's not recyclable. 
It may have been made from recycled plastic, but it's at its it's at its end its lifespan. Okay? And that's what a lot of people don't understand. It's just because it's got the chasing arrows on it doesn't mean that it's still recyclable. Okay? Orange plastic. What happens to what happens to these these things is you put them at the curb, we collect them, we take them to the recycling facility. They sort it, they wash it, okay? Then, depending on how big or small the recycling facility is, they send it to another recycling facility. They sort it, they wash it, and then they grind it, okay? However, orange plastic, there's no market for it, so it's worth nothing. It's a contaminant, okay? Because the the supply is there, but nobody wants it. You know, how many compared to your red, your yellow, your blue, your green, your black Legos? How many orange ones do you see? Very, very little. Very, very little. Because the majority of what happens in China, and when you take these stuff over, they basically they melt it all down, and they and they make beads. They're they're either clear are white in color when they come back from China to the States. Okay? Then, it's basically the beads are melted down and, and, and injected to a molding, and then the color is added. Okay? So, if it's already orange, the colors don't go away from the plastics. When they, when they grind them up and, and they turn them back into beads, they're, they're still an orange bead, they're a blue bead, whatever. Okay? So, that's why this stuff is more of a contaminant than it is recyclable, because there's no market for it. Okay? Trends have actually are, are, are hurting the, the recycling, the current recycling model. You've seen newspapers. How many how many people get newspapers and magazines at home anymore? Very, very few of us. Yeah, very few of us. Because it's all available here. You know, how many jobs have been lost because they're no longer printing all of these and they're not, you know, people aren't subscribing to it anymore. They're, they're, going, they're going here, you know. Just to give you an example, in, in, in 2000, we had 18 million tons of this. Now, there's 2 million tons. Okay? There's your tide again. <clears throat> this one here, I love this. In 2000, it took... 48,000 plastic bottles to make one ton of material. One ton. In 2015, 92,000. Today it's closer to 100,000. Today it's closer to 100,000 plastic bottles to make that same ton of, ton, ton of material. So the costs are going up, and we're getting more of material for less money. Okay? Because in some cases, these plastic bottles, the lid weighs more than the bottle. <coughs> You know, these companies have gotten pretty pretty wise. They know how many cases you can stack on top of each other before that bottom one gives out. Pretty crafty, okay? So, and you can see here that the commodity markets, they've steadily been declining. Cardboard, which you were asking before, is down 40%. Mixed paper, down 95%. <clears throat> The money for the material, the returns just aren't there anymore. And they've been declining for, for years. It basically just took this Chinese ban to make it all come, come to reality. You know, um, I like to call it our, our plastic chickens have come home to roost. <laughs> Pretty much. <clears throat> so what can I do? Pass the word around. Get the word out to your neighbors. Um, schools, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here talking to communities, I'm here talking to you about, about this stuff. We have to open people's eyes because if we don't, things aren't going to change. You know, um, right now, this, this time, you know, we could be 10 years, 15 years from now, look at these days and say, wow, I would have never known that 10, 15 years ago, today we'd never be recycling anymore. And if you think that's not true, ask yourselves. 10, 15 years ago, do you think you couldn't buy a, a Lincoln, or I mean a, a Mercury product? 
or a Chrysler product, um, you know, those cars, they're gone. You know, Chry or what is it, is it not Chrysler, Plymouth, I'm sorry, Plymouth. Plymouth. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't buy a Plymouth Chrysler's car. Chrysler's still back, they just eliminated the brand. Or exactly, here. exactly. They eliminated those lines because they weren't making any money. People weren't buying them. Oldsmobile, okay? You know, people weren't buying them. The demand wasn't there, so they stopped doing it. That's the same thing with recycling. Recycling has to make, these, these companies, including ours, um, and the recycling companies, they have to make a profit. They have people, they have people that, that they have to employ to pay. If they can't make money off it, guess what? Those places are shutting down. People are out of jobs. Unless I missed it, they haven't heard any mention of plastic bags, you know, Walmart style bags. Plastic bags are not recyclable. They're not even allowed in certain landfills anymore. But they certainly are white. They are, they are, so. So what um, does Walmart do with them? Yeah. You know, <laughs> do you? I, I don't know what Walmart does with them, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't. I'm, I'm asking, so. Yeah, yeah, I really don't know what they do with them. Your, some, some of your plastic bags, um, they can be re you reused into that, um, like the, the ultra decking, you know, for your yeah. the plastic yeah. synthetic. We recycle them here. Yeah. For benches. Yeah, for benches and things like that. However, you get back to the <coughs> supply and the demand. There's a whole, a whole bunch of supply, but the demand isn't there. Because if you're building a deck or putting a park bench together and your wood, your treated lumber is 99 cents a, a foot, but your plastic stuff, your, 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 your recycled material is 2.99 a foot, you're gonna buy the 99 cent stuff. You know, so that's that's where the supply and the demand comes because most people are on a budget when they spend that much money. <clears throat> you know, so there's there's your supply and demand kicking back in. Empty, clean, and dry. Empty the material, clean it, dry it. That's what that's what needs to happen. You know, back in the day, I, I was guilty of it when you would talk to people and say, you know. They would, they would tell you about, oh yeah, no, I put my stuff in the dishwasher and wash it out and make sure it's all clean. And you're like, you're nuts. Why do you go through all that? Why do you go through all that stuff? That's that. You don't have to do that. Yeah, that's, that's the way. They had it right. They had it right. We all had it wrong. You know, empty, <clears throat> clean, and dry. It doesn't have to be 100% dry, but it needs to be pretty darn close. You can't put, you know, you can't put um, material in there that has food in it, okay? I like to use the, uh, the ketchup bottle scenario, okay? Most people, when they're done with ketchup, you know, you, you, you beat it on the table to get the last of it out, and then it goes, you know, and then you th throw in the recyclables. Same with peanut butter. You know, it doesn't make a sound, but... <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. Um, the problem with that is once the truck picks it up and squishes it, that bottle explodes. And now the ketchup has gone everywhere, which in turn contaminated the whole load. Okay? Does it still go to the recycling facility? Yes, it does. Okay? It doesn't go to the landfill. But in a, in a, in a city like you know, Princeton and LaSalle, Peru, Spring Valley, you know, you're not just picking up one ketchup bottle. You're picking up several. And you're picking up other you know, peanut butter, mustard, things like that. So the entire load gets contaminated, which means when we take it to the recycling facility, you're graded A, B, C, or D. Well, how dirty is the load? Either means how much you get back for the material, or in today's market, how much you get charged for the material, okay? So empty, clean, and dry, that's, that's key. That's what we gotta preach to everybody, plus, Limit the amount of contaminants. This is some of the stuff that we see every single day coming from communities just like Princeton. You got your styrofoam. You got your plastic tote. <coughs> you got, I don't know what that is. I have no clue. Body. <laughs> they look like a mummy. Um, plastic barrel. There's your famous plastic bags. You know, soiled cardboard. This is a big one. Take, for example, your pizza boxes. Yeah. A pizza box is recyclable all day long. You can recycle a pizza box all day long until you put a pizza in it. 
and now it's contaminated because the grease and the oils from the cheese and the crust get sucked into the cardboard, making it a contaminant. Now it's garbage. Okay, Stuff like this. I don't know what this white material is. Who knows? But that's not recyclable. That's contaminated. That, these are actual pictures. There's your plastic bags in a large plastic bag. Okay, I think this is carpet. That's the only thing I can see. You know, um, these are these pictures are actual. These are these have actually been snapped when the trucks uh, are dumping the loads uh, at the recycling facility at uh, resource management. There's your plastic banding. Um, I think there's a diaper somewhere over in here. Okay. Diapers, diapers aren't recyclable. <laughs> diapers aren't, especially soiled ones. <laughs> you know, but we get them. You know, true story. We had a driver in a community doing the recycling, and he was doing his route. He came up, and there's an elderly lady putting clothes in the recycling container. He pulls up next to her and says, "Ma'am, you can't recycle those clothes. Clothes aren't recyclable." She, her, her response was, "Oh yes, they are." If I can't wear them, somebody else can. Mm. Okay? Exactly. But there, there lies the problem. Lack of education. You know, when we went to the single, single sort um, collection method, people got lazy. You know, we got lazy as an industry. The recycling people, you know, the, the, the recyclers got lazy. Our public officials got lazy. Our public got lazy because it's so easy to mix everything and, like I said, send it on that slow boat to China because China was taking everything. P pretty much no questions asked. Now that's changed. Now we're stuck behind the people and we do need to clean up our act. So you see here plastic, plastic five gallon buckets. Um, there's a laundry basket, fishing tackle box, these large plastic molded items. Uh, a little tykes, this is a pink Jeep. This is a pink Jeep. Well, there's a tire. You know, obviously that's not recyclable, but that's the stuff we find. You know, your 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 little tykes, um, your little tykes toys. You know, with the sl the slides and little houses and things like that. Yeah, they're made out of plastic, and yeah, they are recyclable, but not when you put it out on the curb, because the facilities that haulers take them to aren't designed to handle that kind of material. Okay, so they're a contaminant. They're garbage. You're going to tell us what to do with those things, aren't you? Throw them in the garbage. And and you're going to tell us what you do. We we landfill them. You pro you landfill them. Yeah, stuff like that. This is all of this is what gets sent back to us. In a, all these these are contaminants. So these are sent back to us on another truck that we bury. Did you grind them up and sort? Them? No, we bury them. We dig a hole and we bury it. That's what a landfill is. I mean, obviously it's got a, a liner and everything so that the liquids don't leach out into the groundwater and things like that. They're very, very safe. But if there's if if there's no avenue for this stuff, it gets buried. It's trash. Except for the tire. The tire out, you know. Um, so that's that's the alternative. And it's unfortunate, but if they don't have, you know, if they don't have an, an outlet for it. They have nothing. They they have no other choice but to send it back to us to bury it. What about tires? Men to tire. Uh, tires are a headache. Um, you know, you can take them back to, uh, you know, some of the tire changing garages and things like that for a fee. You know, they'll take them and then they'll recycle them. They, they shred them up. I've heard they're shredded uh, tires are used in. Material, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, and and playground playground material. However, with the um, the steel banding that's in them, you know, it's very co it, it's it's very costly to, to pull that metal out and and that. So, yeah, tires are tires are another issue. I have a question. Uh, what is our company doing about incentivizing legislation that charges for plastic bags? Because in England. I just looked this up. The use of plastic bags went down 86% when they started charging for it. 
Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good, uh, you're, you're, you're starting to see. to make that happen? To my knowledge, I'm sure there is, but it's a way above, you know, way above my pay grade. Um, but you're starting to see the, you know, those reusable bags. You know, my wife's got a bunch of those that we, that we reuse um, and that, so that's starting to change. You know, overseas, uh, you know, your, your takeout, your takeout stuff. You go to you know, Beck's or whatever or what, and get your little takeout thing. Well, over overseas, they, they give you a, a china cup and a, and a saucer and say, bring this back when you're done and we'll give you a, your dollar fifty back. Mm -hmm. You know, so they've got very little um, plastics and things like that that are, that are being thrown in the industry just because of what, of what they do. And that's what we need to do. But the problem with us, we're a throwaway society. We've all we've, we've been that way for decades. It's this isn't going to change overnight. This is going to take years and years of public education, years and years of doing things differently. You know, and and maybe you're right. You know, what's the quickest way to get somebody to start or stop doing something? Through their, through their pocketbook. For many years in California, you had to pay for glass bottles, wine bottles, and everything. And they have these little machines where you stick them in, yep. and you get your money. This, this Chinese ban is killing the California markets. It's just killing their programs <coughs> because they've got nowhere else to go with it. They don't want it. Nobody wants it. That's pretty much it. <coughs> Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> I do, if you if you allow me, I do have a quick video. Um, my presentation is pretty much done except for questions. But if I can, if we can back out, find how to back out of this and play the video real quick. Sure. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> well, yeah, no, I, I was just wondering about all that. <laughs> Seems to me they're prepared to wear mine wearing shoes. Well, I'm not going to dress them straight. Spring is that's my last thing. I was reading the minutes and I was wondering if you were going to do this with the relation of the whole. But the. Ricks. I just stopped typing. <laughs> okay. I'm going to summarize this. So, he can't. That's not his business. He's his permission. Businesses to make money, following the way, what we give them for a second. But I do want to 